Hello everyone, this is Rosé. Today's topic from the Book of Life is Deborah the Prophetess. Deborah, a prophetess, a judge, a woman of godly wisdom, strength, and poise. Let's take a look at the short story about Deborah from the Book of Life. After the death of Josiah, a new generation of Israelites arose which knew not the Lord, nor the works which he had done for Israel. And the new generation, children of Israel, did evil in the sight of the Lord, which caused them to be in captivity under different rulers. After the children of Israel served in captivity 18 years under King Eglon, when they cried out to the Lord, the Lord heard their cry and raised them up a deliverer. The deliverer name was Ahu. Ahu was a Benjamite from the tribe of Benjamin. As one reads the Bible, it appears the children of Israel does evil in the sight of God with each new generation by worshiping gods made by hand. God punished Israel by allowing them to be put into captivity under the authority of an oppressor. I always say, if the new generations do not learn life lesson by the wisdom of their elders, they will learn by the errors of their ways in life. Once again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God when Ahu was dead. And the Lord allowed them to be in captivity under King Jabin of Canaan. The captain of whose army was Sisera. King Jabin's army had 900 chariots of iron, and for 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. At this time, Deborah, a prophetess, judged Israel. So Deborah, being the judge of Israel, during the time when Jabin was their oppressor. Deborah was the wife of Lapudak. The Bible doesn't speak about Deborah's husband other than to give his name. I, I, I believe that the Bible wanted to show Deborah's status didn't want any assumption of assuming that um, she was not a lady of integrity because of her position. The Bible doesn't speak about Deborah's husband other than to give his name. So we can assume he had to be a secure, strong, and humble man to be married to a judge during a period in time when there were not many women leaders. Deborah dwelled under a palm tree between Ramah and Bethlehem. The children of Israel came to her for judgment. Deborah, a prophetess, having divine knowledge as the voice of God would help direct or guide God chosen leader to deliver the children of Israel from the hand of their oppressor, King Jabin. Now keep in mind, King Jabin has a very strong commanding officer and a army of men 
with 900 chariots of iron. One day, Deborah sent for Barack. No, not Barack Obama. She sent for Barack, the son of a Benam man out of Kadesh and Naphtali, and said to him, she said to Barak, Have not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with you ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebalon. Men from two different locations has to be brought together in order to overtake commanding officer Cicera army under King Jabin. I mean, that's how powerful King Jabin's army was. And their, and their commanding officer was a very strong commanding officer. They had lots of men in their army, as well as the 900, you know, chariots of iron. So although Barak has the promise of God saying, I will deliver you into the hands of, I will deliver it into your hands. So this is what God said. That he told, he made this promise to through the prophetess Deborah, and it was delivered to Barak that God said that he would deliver into his hands Jabin army with his chariots. Chariots. So God is making this promise. This should be enough reassurance right there for Barak to know God is with him. He gave you a word. He gave you a promise that he would deliver into your hands this mighty strong army, his commander, his king, the army, his chariots. I'm going to deliver them into your hands. But yet and still, Barak did not want to go into battle without Deborah. He depended on her divine knowledge as the voice of God. Barak says to Deborah, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, then I will not go. Deborah tells Barak, I will surely go with you. This journey that you are taking is not of your honor, but for the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. A classy, classy lady who knew her purpose and she handled it well with poise. Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak called Zabalon and Napoli to Kadesh. He went with 10,000 men at his feet and Deborah by his side. Now, Heber, the Canite, which is of the children of Hobath, the father-in-law of Moses, has separated himself from the Canites and has placed his dwelling, a tent, near Kadesh. Being near Kadesh, Hebar could see Barak coming up to Mount Tabor. So he tells Sincera about Barak coming up to Mount Tabor. Now Sincera gathers together all his chariots of iron and all the people that were with him. Now Deborah encouraged Barak by reminding him this is the day in which the Lord have delivered Sincera into your hands. She encouraged him using past tense. 
letting him know you must believe, believe it before you see it. If the Lord declared it, so shall it be. The Lord God is not a God who can lie. She further tells him, Have not the Lord gone out before you? Barak was encouraged after Deborah spoke into his spirit. He went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. The Lord discomfited Sir Sarah and all his chariots and all his army with the edge of the sword before Barak. So he did what he said he was going to do. When he told Barak, I will deliver them into your hands. Since Sarah jumped down. Now, see Barak, the Lord discomforts Sarah and all his chariots. But since Sarah, he escaped. He jumps down off his chariot and fled away on feet. Now Barak was hyped up. Okay, he pursued after the chariots and the army and all fell upon the edge of his sword and there was not a man left, not one left that was present once he pursued them and caught up with them. But since Sarah was still on the run, how be it? Since Sarah fled away on his feet to the tent of J.O., the wife of Heber, the king, Canaanite. So J.O. is the wife of Heber, the Canaanite. Now, if you recall, it was Heber who ran and told since Sarah about Barak was coming. When he saw him go up to the Mount of Tabor. So since Sarah went there. Now he, he remember since Sarah is. He's the only one that's still out there. He fled on feet. So they out. Barak is after him. He's in pursuit after since Sarah. But so since Sarah went to. Where he felt he had. A treaty with someone where he felt he would be hidden away. So, because of the peace between King Jabin and the house of Heber, the the cake, you know, the one that ran and told Sincera about uh, Barak. So there was a peace between him and the king. So Sincera felt. Okay, I can go there and hide out because he, after all, he did come tell me Barack was coming and he is friends with, he has peace with my king, Jabin. So he runs to that tent, but of course, Heber was not there, but his wife was there. His wife's name is Jael. She was there. So... Although Heber was a traitor, his wife was not on one accord with him. She was totally teen Israel. Totally teen Israel. Not a traitor like her husband. So Jael, the wife of Heber, went out to meet Sarah as he approached on foot. She saw him from her tent coming up to the coming up approaching the tent. She goes out to meet him. Okay. So she tells him to turn in, my lord, to me. Fear not. She makes him feel welcome and secure because she knew why he was running to their tent. Because she knew that her husband was friends with him and his king and her husband has separated himself from the rest of his people so she knew why he was coming and her husband wasn't there 
So she tells him, turn in, my Lord, to me, fear not. He did. He turned into her, into the tent. He comes and he, he follows her into the tent. She covers him with a mantle, a garment. He asks her for a drink of water before she covered him with the garment. Because, see, he ran there to hide. Now, when he asked her for a drink of water, because he said he was thirsty, he had been on the run, but on foot, he was very thirsty, she gave him a bottle of milk. Then he tells her to stand in the door of the tent, and if any man come and ask of me, she is to say to him that he is not there. So, since Sarah... He is lying comfortable because he's, you know, she greeted him, made him believe that she's on his side. She greeted him. She asked him to come into her tent. He follows her. So now he's feeling comfortable. She gave him a bottle of milk. So now he is laying there asleep under the garden, the garment, feeling like, okay, he's hidden from everybody. And when they come looking for him, Barack come looking for him. Jo will be at the door of the tent, staring him away, telling him he's not there. So he feels comfortable. But what he didn't know while he was sleeping, Jo takes one of the tent's huge nails, huge nails, and she hammered the nail into since Sarah temple while he was sleeping. Of course, Sincero dies. Now, as Barack is pursuing Sincero, he comes to jail tent. She goes out of the tent to meet him and to greet him. And she tells Barack, come and I will show you the man whom you seek. When Barak come into the tent, he sees Sincera lying dead with a nail in his temple. God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel, and the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin until they destroy them. So God did exactly what he promised Barak he would do. When he spoke to Barak through Deborah the prophetess, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He delivered them all into Barak's hands. Then Deborah and Barak sang on that day, saying, Praise you the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O you kings. I want you to hear, O you kings. We, we're singing this song and we're giving warning to you. Hear, O you kings. Give ear, O you prince. So I want you kings to hear and I want you prince to listen as well. Yes, I, yes, even I will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. For he is an avenger of Israel's oppressors to Israel against their oppressors. He avenged Israel against their oppressors that he delivered them out of the hands of their oppressors. Praise be God of Israel. Deborah is a perfect biblical example of a boss lady who knew her position and operated within the power of her position with poise. She was respected as a leader. The Israelites came to her for judgment 
and Bar Barak refused to go into battle without her. So ladies, as you navigate in what society calls a man's world, please know that your place, position, is just as important as a man. God created both male and female to be equal in position. Both are to be both are to complement each other, support each other, build each other up, not tear each other down, not compete against one another. It's not a competition. A secure man will recognize your talent, your strength, your value, and he will allow you to be your God-given self, whether you work in the home or outside the home. There is value in being a housewife and a mother just as much as it is in being a judge like Deborah. If a man is trying to dim your light by only allowing you to be seen but not heard, to not operate within your God-given talent, please pray about it. Ask God to help you use wisdom in your decision-making when it comes to a man. Don't be weak. Don't be weak to him because he can raise his voice louder than you or because he's physically stronger than you. Don't be weak to him and feel that you're less than, that you got to give all to him and everything you do is for him and you get nothing in return. Know your value and your worth. Understand you being a help mate to him doesn't mean that you have to be a slave or a doormat. You are you both are to complement each other, to support each other, to lift each other up. It's a reason why God made you to be a mate, because you 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 are to complement, to give to each other. There's things that you can do that he cannot do. There's things he can do that you cannot do. But when you bring both together, you are a you are mighty powerhouse together. Understand, you play a, a significant role in being in relationship with a person, a man, or whoever you're in relationship with. You play a very significant role. Know your value. Know your worth. No one should hold you down or hold you back. Or make you feel less than human. Pray about it. Please pray about it. God will hear you. And he will answer you. Just like he heard the cry of the Israelites. And he answered them. He brought a deliverer to them. But you must be open to the truth of his word. When he come to you and he answer you. If you're going to cast aside what God said and what he instructing you to do because you want to be weak to this man, even though you, you're tired of it, but yet and still you're fearful and you feel that you it, this is as good as it get, then you can't grow. You can't, you can't recognize and see your own strength and the power of who God is in you and with you. You can't grow and you can't see that if you're not open to the truth of his word. If you don't follow the instructions that he gave you, just like he gave to Barak. You know, Barak, he had to have Deborah go with him. But at least he did go and carry out. And when he did, he saw that God was with him and he did exactly what he said he was going to do. Understand that. Know that when God is on your side, it doesn't matter how many is against you. It does not matter how many is against you as long as you got God on your side. Trust in him. Believe in him. Know your value and your worth. Be blessed, sisters. Click the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Be blessed. Be safe. Peace. Remember to click that thumbs up button.